What is a peg? Well, a peg allows us to move artwork across our stage or in our scene. Now, what, what is this term peg? Where does this term come from? Well, it comes back from the days when they used to draw animation frame by frame. And they would use animation discs or they would shoot on animation tables that actually have a peg bar. So not only would they be animating frame by frame, drawn frame by frame, but they would also be animating the movement of that artwork through time. Why do we use a peg to move artwork? Why don't we just move the artwork across the screen? Well, drawing frame by frame, yeah, you may animate artwork across the screen, sure. But if you're actually moving artwork across the screen, uh, like a logo um, or a character, sometimes you're just moving a character, not necessarily a walk cycle, but you're sliding a character across the screen for whatever reason. Well, that would work with a peg. Yeah, that would be fine. But what's the benefit of that? Why don't we just move the artwork? Well, let's say you have a character and the character has a prop, could be a skateboard, or in my case, my trusty coffee mug. Don't leave home without it. Um, and yeah, when I'm animating, if it was a drawn animation and the coffee mug's in my hand, yeah, it would probably be animated on the same layer. If it's rigged, they would actually be separate layers. But let's say you're gonna animate the mug being thrown or um, something gonna disconnect the mug from the character. Then you put these drawings on separate layers. Well, now you have to worry that the two layers match up. And whenever you move the character, like what I'm doing now, the mug moves with the character. Well, we would use a peg to move multiple layers. That way, I can move the mug and the hand at the same time. We do that a lot with rigs. Okay, but even in drawn animation, we'll actually put the two on a peg and that way they, the, the drawing and the prop will sync together and you won't get this floaty, pug, floaty mug that's disconnected from the character and I don't get my morning coffee. Another good reason to animate a peg is let's say you're animating a car and you have the wheels turning, right? And maybe you have the car going up and down and, and inside you have the character going opposite the car, right? Well, now you're talking four wheels, four layers, the character's on a layer, the car body is on another layer. So right there, six cars. If you wanted to move all six layers at the same time, that would be six keys, 12 keys, just to move it once. Okay? Whereas if they're all attached to a peg, it's only two keys, starting point and end point, and then all those layers move with it. Before we get started, I do have some tips that I'm gonna pass on to you. And I will go into these tips in detail, but I'm gonna put them up front first. First thing is, when you start up Harmony, turn off the Animate button. That button has to be off. When do we use that button? Well, that's tip number two. We use that button or we turn that button on when we're ready to animate our pegs. But if we're just setting our scene up, you know, putting the house in the right place, putting the character in the right place, just kind of setting everything up, that button should be off all the time. But when you're ready to animate the pegs, then we turn the button on. So that's tip one and two, not bad. Tip three. Tip three. Pegs can be controlled by other pegs. In my example, I have a car. The body, the tire, the rim, the tire rim, and the stripes are all different drawing layers. 
So I have one peg moving all four layers. But I want the tire to turn. So what I did is I took the tire and put it on a peg and just had it turn in, in place. Then I took that tire peg with the tire attached and attached it back to the car. So that way the car peg can control the tire peg. So when I move the car, the tire moves with it. You'll see me do it. Tip number four, and this is an important one. Well, they're all important, but this one's important. Don't use the delete key. If you create an animation key, if you create an animation, cre if you create an animation key and you don't like it, don't hit delete on it. That will delete the key and the drawing. So when you're watching the film, you're going to see car, 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 no car, 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 car. Okay. So what we do when we make a key that we don't like, we use F7. Don't use the delete key. Number five, the transform tool. The transform tool we use to move the pegs or animate the pegs. Okay. But we never use the transform tool on drawings. That's tip number six. So the transform tool is great on pegs, not so great on drawings. During the demonstration, I'll show you when I'm going to use these tips. So I just loaded up Harmony and I loaded that project that I was talking about. It's my Mustang. I like it. I don't have a yellow one, <laughs> um, but it looks good on screen. So let's go with it. Um, as you can see, it has four drawing layers. It has the stripes, the car body, the wheel and the rim all on separate drawing layers. Okay. Now, before I do anything, I'm going to refer to tip number one. turn off the animate button. That's what the button looks like. And you could see on the timeline further down or on the toolbar where it is. Okay. And coincidentally, uh, below it is our transform tool. So those are the two tools that I was talking about earlier, the animate button and the transform tool. So they're kind of together, which is handy for us. But tip number one, turn off the animate button. So I'm going to go to my animate button, click and turn it off. Now I can move parts around and fix things up. Um, we're going to use the, the select tool to move objects. Like I said, never move drawings with the transform tool. Okay, so right now I have the transform tool because I'm getting ready to animate. But when you're setting up your scene, you're going to use your select tool to move objects around. Now, in case you started using the transform tool um, to move your drawings around, okay, or if you're not sure, what you want to do is you want to look at your timeline down here at the bottom and see if there's any black dots, keys, right? So if I, if that was, if I had moved things around, I may see stuff like those. Okay. Those are keys on drawings. We don't want keys on drawings. That's very dangerous for us. So uh, what that means is that means we're moving artwork without the peg and we don't want to do that. So what we do is we go to these keys and we hit F7, not delete, F7, F7, F7. Now parts of the car might jump or move. That's okay. That's when we go back to our select tool and move those parts back. Okay. 
Now I have all my drawing layers set up. They're all in place. I don't have any keys on my timeline. Now I'm going to add all these car parts to one peg. So what I'm going to do is go to the car body, hit the add layer or the plus button, and I'm going to add a parent peg. And you could see that the car body now has a car body P, which is a peg. This is the drawing, this is the peg. Now I can add the stripes to that peg by dragging it on top. And I can add the wheel to that peg by driving, dragging it on top. And I can add the rim as well. So now, on the peg layer, using the transform tool, I can move the entire car. Okay. I didn't set a key because my animation button is off. Okay, But when I'm ready to animate, I would turn that button on, put the car where I want it to start. I can even scale it. And then go further on my timeline. That's going to be a fast Mustang with one wheel. And there you go. We have a fast Mustang with one wheel. <laughs> OK, I'm sure you're still saying it. Come on, Mario, we're still animating a car with one tire. <laughs> Let's get the other tire going. So right now we have a car body peg that's moving the car horizontally from side to side. It's moving all these parts side to side horizontally. The rim peg is rotating that tire or that rim. It's only rotating the rim, not the, the wheel itself. Now, now that we have that tire working, let's duplicate what we have. But before we do that, let's put the rim and the wheel in its own package, on its own peg, basically. So on the wheel drawing, I'm going to add a peg, plus button here, plus parent peg. So now I have a wheel peg. And I'm going to drag the rim peg onto the wheel peg. There you go. So now I can select all of it with just this one peg. Okay. Now that I have that, I could duplicate this whole package. So I'm going to go edit, duplicate on the wheel peg. So now what I'm going to do is collapse the wheel peg. See how I can collapse it down? And I'm going to go edit, duplicate. And that will give me a second wheel. See that? Wheel peg two. And all the parts are underneath it. And I'm going to name this wheel peg rear. It's still a peg. And it has its own rim underneath it. See? There's the first one. Here's our second one. Now, I'm going to use this peg to relocate the rear tire. Most important, though, I have to be on frame one. Because you want the tire to be at the rear of the car on frame one. So I'm on frame one with the wheel peg rear selected. Animation button is on. Using the transform tool, I'm going to pull that wheel to the back. 
you'll see that it generated a key for me. What that key indicates is the location of that wheel. So anytime I want to make an adjustment to that wheel, I have to make sure I'm on frame one where that key is. And I'm not going to set any other keys on that. That one key will keep the tire in place. Hope that was fun for you. Remember our tips though. When we're setting up our scene, turn the animation button off. When we're ready to animate, then you turn the animation button on. Pegs can be on top of other pegs. So we had the body peg. Under that, we had the wheel peg. Under that, we had the rim peg. And we used each one for different reasons. The body peg moved the car side to side. The wheel peg let us set the location of that tire, the whole tire, rim and all. The rim peg let us set the rotation. Tip number four, never use, use the delete key. If you want to delete a key, use F7, not delete. Tip five, we used the transform tool to move or rotate our pegs. That's what that tool is for. Tip six, never use the transform tool on a drawing. Hope this was helpful. Have fun. What is a peg? Well, a peg allows us to move artwork. But where does it come from? Why a term peg? Well, I've always wanted to do that. Just grab something off screen like an animated character. Why do we animate the peg? Why don't we just move the drawing across the stage? Well, we could. <clears throat> <clears throat>